everyone. I want to talk today about what's going on in Iran right now. The brutality of the Islamic Republic and the Mullahs is absolutely out of control. I wanted to talk about what's going on, not in a detailed sense. Instead, I wanted to talk more on a kind of strategic level. The first thing to understand is these kind of totalitarian authoritarian regimes they might appear very strong, and as they say, the crackdown has been very brutal, but they're incredibly fearful. They appear strong, but they're actually riddled with all kinds of weaknesses. And their weakness is the fear that they have. They have all of the, the money. They've monopolized the wealth of your country. They've monopolized the, the weaponry, the, the military, etc. But you have the numbers. And if you gather together, if you concentrate those numbers, if you create a nationwide movement, that, that terrifies them. They live every day with the insecurity knowing that the numbers could completely destroy them and they have a lot to lose. So while you might appear to be the weaker side because you don't have the money and you don't have the weaponry on your side, you are in essence the stronger side if you realize this basic fact of strategy, that they are terrified of movements like yours. This is for every kind of totalitarian, authoritarian regime in the world. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. You are the stronger side in this struggle. So in my study of, of these things, there are two things that authoritarian dictatorships survive by their main strategy. And I would summarize it with two words, separation and silence. And those two things, separation and silence, actually go hand in hand. You can't do one without the other. And what I mean by this is, since you have the stronger hand in this through the numbers, the numbers of people, literally, quantity, their main strategy is to keep you continually separated. If you join together in any form, in any kind of public way, through demonstrations, through unions, whatever, that gives you power. So their whole game is to keep you continually separated. And I could, I could compare it to some kind of machine that is continually to kind of grinding things down and separating them to small and small and smaller pieces. They want you to be spending most of your time at home, worrying about how to get by with money and, and concerned about your own private life, as opposed to thinking about the country as a whole. They want to separate you in various ways. They want to pit men versus women. They want to pit Persians versus Kurds. They want to pit upper classes versus middle classes. They want to pit whatever it is they can so that by dividing you, the old strategy of divide and conquer, that strength that you have in numbers is greatly diluted and they, they can have the upper hand. So they're trying to continually crush and pressure you into spending most of your time outside the public realm. They may try to bribe you like, well, spend your time, you can do your time shopping, you can go to malls, you can go to movies. But anything that involves the public, where it's not on the where, where people can express their dissatisfaction, that is forbidden. So they've slowly tried to erode these kinds of regimes. Try to slowly erode any kind of public space, any kind of gathering spot for people in in the square, any kind of political rally, and also unions. They're trying to get rid of any kind of unions. This goes hand in hand with the other strategy of silence. And the thing is, in these kinds of situations, in countries that are suffering under these kinds of regimes, most people, the majority of people, are quite miserable. You have no power. You live in terror. You live in fear. But you don't get to express that. You, you, you don't, you're not mingling with other people. There's no outlet for it, except maybe on social media, which they greatly control, and there's lots of censorship. They control the media, the mainstream media, as, as it were. So they envelop you in this kind of silence where everybody is unhappy, or most people in Iran or in these countries, 90%, 95% are deeply unhappy about it, but there's no way to understand that everybody else feels the same way. I like to call that a public secret. It's shared by everybody in the public, but it's a secret that nobody gets to talk about or express. So they're trying to continually silence you by controlling the internet, by controlling social media, by getting rid of all kinds of spaces where you can congregate and express and understand that most people in the country 
feel the same way. The main response on your side is to overcome this separation, to show that this idea that you are separated is an illusion, that this idea that you're not unhappy, that you're not miserable is an illusion. You want to break this kind of spell that they have created over you where you're all separated, you're all living in your private homes, you're all living in your little neighborhoods and nobody's communicating with one another. So you want like a nationwide movement. You want to open the doors so that everybody is seen together, visibly seen together. The more numbers, the better. And you want to try and resist this kind of dynamic that they're foisting upon you of continual separation. So what is happening in these movements? And we've seen it in Sri Lanka, we've seen it in Russia, we've seen it in other parts of the world, in, in the Arab Spring movement, where there is this beginning of this, of this swelling movement among the populace that's growing, is that they're going to continually try to pit one side against another. They want to kind of fracture your movement. They want to make it seem that you are actually going to create more problems, that businesses are going to fail, that you're going to make life worse for people in this country. So they're going to try and separate the working classes from the elites, etc., etc., or men versus women, because this is a movement that largely at first was generated by women with the uh, Amini protests, which is one of the most important factors in your favor, actually, because the thing is, if you get women involved in a movement like this, it's women from all classes, women from all ethnicities. This bridges all of the separation um, gaps that they're trying to create. You're overcoming this separating tendency that they're bringing through actually the, the organizing of women of all classes and ethnicities throughout the country. But they're going to try and separate you and you have to resist this with all of your might. So you're all in this together. Every person, every ethnicity, every faction is in this together. And you're not going to fall for the dynamic where they're going to try and separate you on any level. The other thing is the silence. You have to be continually voicing your, your and, and making it apparent and making it clear so that this public secret becomes public knowledge. Everybody in the country knows what is going on. Everybody knows that everybody else, their neighbors, are equally unhappy. Everyone has the same similar kind of complaints and gripes and is suffering in the same way. And your voices are raised and you're raising it continually. You're shouting from your balconies. You're shouting from the rooftops. You're, you're giving slogans out. You're breaking the spell of silence they're trying to foist on you.